Android or iPhone? This has been a clashing argument since the introduction of both mobile operating systems in the past over 10 years. Most people debate this with features, stability, usability of each operating system in mind, but how do they compare in terms of valuing you and your data? Which has better privacy and security? I'll save that question for a different video, but regardless of the answer, what's of utmost importance for consumers is competition and options. It's vital that we are not limited to only one mobile operating system that values our data and personal information. Like I said, I'll make a video on Apple someday, but this video is not about them. Now, those of you who have lurked on the channel for a while are likely aware of a custom version of Android, a ROM, called Lineage OS. In summary, this is an open source, private ROM with limited tracking done on its users. But one big issue with Lineage OS is, in some ways, it lowers the security of your device. It disables verified boot, weakens SC Linux policies, uses user debug builds, which adds a lot of attack surface, it requires an unlocked bootloader, it doesn't have rollback protection, and these are just a few complaints. As a whole, Lineage OS is a good project, I don't want to take that away from them, but it still falls short in a lot of areas. But we need a better option that includes both privacy and security. Luckily, as of today, that option is Graphene OS. The main developer of Graphene OS is Daniel McKay, who was the previous developer of Copperhead OS. He joined the Android Hardening Project, which was renamed to Graphene OS. Graphene OS is built from the ground up to be private and secure for the user. It is arguably one of the best mobile operating systems for your privacy and security as of today. And it's even been endorsed by some big names. As of today, it is only supported on select Pixel devices. Now, Google devices are chosen here because they are ironically the most open towards doing this, and Pixels implement some of the best security of Android devices. So, I got the Pixel 3a XL, put graphene on it ASAP, and well, here we are a couple months later. On the surface, you'll see it's just like any version of Android, really. If you're already using an Android device, there's really no additional learning curve. It's exactly like stock Android, and if you've never used stock Android, well, most people agree it's smooth, simple, and elegant. Now, if you've never used a custom ROM before, the first thing that's going to trip you up is, where's the Play Store? And where's any Google, for that matter? Well, there is none. Thank goodness. Uh, there are no Google Play services, no Google Play Store, nothing. Now, most custom ROMs will allow you to manually install Google Play services, and you can actually choose to what extent you want Google invading your phone in life. But Graphene does not have support for this, and rightfully so. I'd hope that's not a priority for someone looking for a ROM with utmost privacy and security. So what can you even do with this phone outside send a message and make phone calls? <laughs> Fool, you're on Android. You can install the APK for Fdroid, which is an app store that has only free and open source software. You might find some apps you use to use from the Play Store, and if not, your two options are to find an alternative, or you can get the Aurora store from Fdroid, which is the Google Play Store wrapper that allows you to install any application from the Play Store. It can even auto-create an anonymous Google account for you. This is where you can get applications that are not found in Fdroid, and the only caveat is you don't have Google Play services, meaning some apps won't open, some will have a couple features that are broken, and some will work perfectly as intended without issues. You just gotta try it and see if your apps will work. Just cross your fingers. And... <laughs> so once you have your applications and everything set up and ready to go, what then? Well first, you might see a very, very slight performance decrease, and this is attributed to some of the hardening in the ROM. On the upside, battery life in this ROM is spectacular. From 100% to 0%, I can go without charging for two to three days. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna get those numbers because I disable most things that happen on my phone, but it's definitely feasible for you to get three days out of a Pixel 3a XL on Graphene OS. Practically speaking, what does my phone look like? Well, I have my OTP app for two-factor authentication from Fdroid. I can actually use Garmin Connect from Aurora, and it works perfectly fine to sync my runs after I'm done. The only feature that doesn't work is I can't view the map of where I ran, and I can view this in my Garmin Connect account online if I want to. I'm going to make a video about private options for sport tracking, so subscribe if you want to see that in the future, because you can actually do it relatively privately. I have a Habits application from Fdroid, KeyPass DX from Fdroid, a fantastic budget app from Fdroid, NewPipe from Fdroid as my YouTube alternative, which is 
an awesome app, by the way. If you're not using a custom ROM, I'd still recommend downloading FDroid and getting new pipe. It's great. Open camera from FDroid, signal from its website, and slide from FDroid as my alternative Reddit client. Everything else is a stock application. As for features, you're gonna get access to NFC, Bluetooth, Hotspot, all that good jazz, although Google Pay and whatever pay there is nowadays will obviously not work. And Bluetooth does require a quick settings toggle to play media properly. I spent almost two months not knowing this, and yes, that there is a fix for that. <laughs> So I came from Lineage OS on my Nexus 6P, which I used for a couple years. If you're looking for a new phone or you already have a Pixel that's supported by Graphene OS, I cannot recommend that you hop on this ROM enough. It seriously has been awesome. Now the very last thing is that the Graphene OS development is very dependent on Daniel McKay, and they are struggling to get enough developers and contributors to the project. If you want to support these kinds of efforts, please do, it's really needed. You can contribute by using the ROM, joining the beta channel and reporting any bugs you experience. You can donate, join their communities and helping out with issues they encounter. They have a subreddit, a Twitter account. You can follow Daniel McKay on Twitter. And if you are able, definitely contribute directly on their GitHub. This is the best and most needed way that you can contribute, but it's gonna require some development experience unless you wanna do translations or something else that's available on their GitHub. But this is hands down the most important thing it needs and that you can do. So let's put a wrap on this video. We're at the point where two of the best options for privacy and security are iOS from a trillion dollar company who claims to be private yet has committed questionable practices and doesn't publicize much of anything of how their OS works. And on the other hand, you have a community driven project that's sole goal is to protect you and that project needs your help. As a matter of fact, most, if not all, open source projects need your help, as well as everybody's help. So I challenge you watching this video to not only contribute and help Graphene OS, but go through the software you use on a day-to-day -day basis and see what can be replaced with software that values you. And if you enjoy it, see if you can contribute to it in any way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you wanna see an installation guide for Graphene. Also, if you didn't notice, I have this really cool case and also a privacy screen protector for my 3AXL. I'll go ahead and link those in the description if you want to get those using our Amazon affiliate link to help support our channel as well. And that's it. Have a lean Mauritius day.